You know what? So amazing about being here today and talking to all you guys is I've been doing this for almost 30 years. Since I was a student at Sac State, I've been talking to folks just like you. I remember wheeling, and I tell this story all the time because it's so important to me, wheeling typewriters to the Capitol and unboxing them and show them how you could type 100 characters, look at it, make sure it was right, hit a button, and print it out. Back then, that was serious innovation. That was serious advancement. The IBM Will Rider typewriter was a beautiful, amazing thing. And ever since then in my career, and mostly being in Sacramento, I went to Orange County for a little while, there's been these waves of amazing innovation that have come out. I mean, truly just amazing innovation that have changed the way you and the state and the citizens of the state and the businesses of this state, etc., the way in which you do things. Who would have thought 10 years ago that many of the things that exist today would even be in existence? Who would have thought? Google. Book. The list is long. There's so many of them. There is just so many amazing capabilities, I call them, and I think I might even start calling them elements. I don't know. They're out there. They're like the core components of technology that can be leveraged to do amazing things. I, you know, I look at, when I look at where the state is right now, what can be done in the state, and the people at the state that we need to serve, I look at taking those elements, those capabilities, and building human systems with them. A human system would be an innovation where we kind of look at it in this way. I'll use our own cloud and some of the, by the way, almost all the amazing huge leaps that have taken place in society over the last 10 years have been around the cloud. The cloud is something that's been built and exists. It's massive horsepower to do amazing things right now iTunes, downloading apps on your phone, entire sophisticated apps with identity and access management, privacy today, right now. It's out there and we're doing it, we're living it, we're breathing it. We truly live it and we breathe it and those things come out of the cloud. Those elements, the idea of building human systems is taking these amazing elements of capability and saying how can I take those things that are already built <coughs> and serve need right now. And that's what, in my mind, the concept of a combination of human systems and technology, of innovation and leadership. The leadership part is saying, I see that opportunity within my framework of performing the proper due diligence and the proper scoping and the, and the governance and, and the, the investigation of is this right? Can this be done? And at what time frame? The innovation is a different cycle than it was even three years ago, five years ago, and certainly ten years ago. And I speak to you from the perspective of having done these projects in this state and around the country and multiple continents for that matter for three decades now. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm like a kid in a candy store, Becca, and you guys who know me, I, I literally, I mean, I'm one of those guys who got scar tissue. I've been a part of big projects that have failed. I mean, it's hard. But I sit down with these people in Google and other companies, by the way, and we talk about the challenges that government faces. And the people who manage this cloud infrastructure and have new ways of looking at things go, James, it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that hard. We can do this. I remember battling, I mean, for years, standing up identity and access management in the state and 134 departments my years at Microsoft working with brilliant people. And the technology that existed at that time to, to stand up this identity and access management across 130 to four departments. It was tough. And we did it and we powered through and we had our challenges. At Google right now, and it's not just Google, but I work for Google, so I'm going to use my organization as the example. There's plenty of examples. Microsoft and their Azure platform would be one. Salesforce is another. We stand up 1.3 million authenticated users a day. 1.3 million a day. When I was working diligently with OTEC to stand up the state's email system when I worked at Microsoft, the Office 365 system, we had challenges that were entirely different then than what exists right now to do amazing things. 
what if we change the way we look at what it is we're doing? What if we center our efforts not around the systems, but around the people that we serve? What if we build communities around a child or a family? What if we take all the people from across the programs that serve a child uh, in a foster home, or a veteran, or a student? What if we organize around them and build this human system? What if we take, I love saying this, because this is the first aha moment I have, so I'm gonna back up. What if we take Google search we have the ability to go to a search box today and type information in there and go to the world's information and bring back what it is we see. In fact, if my son is in a water polo tournament and scores five goals, like two days later, magically, I type his name, there it is. I'm like, wow. What if we take a structure thoroughly planned out under proper governance and risk mitigation strategies that our IT leaders in the state have? and take this new amazing capability, i.e. a Google search, and just scan and index all the information across human services. Scan and index all the information that we might need to serve the homeless, to serve families. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. The whole world is doing this right now. We can do it. We can do it, and you know what? In the larger scope of things, scale is not even an issue anymore. I remember battling hard and competing in many scenarios at Unisys and working so closely with IBM and Deloitte and other systems where the challenge was scale and the scale is the state of California. That is not a challenge anymore. It simply is not. So we need to rethink the way that we organize and we attack these problems. We need to look at what exists today, the modern technologies that exist today, and we need to point them towards the challenges we face. The last time I was a panelist at an event kind of like this, I was at the Ronald Reagan building in D.C. And at this time, I was leading HP's uh, uh, analytics and big data and business intelligence program across the Americas. And I had the coolest opportunity, in fact, being a military brat, I went in, I was I'm like, I'm in the Ronald Reagan building, but there's generals and people from three-letter agencies, and we were there to talk about big data and what that means. And what I suggested, and this is what I'm suggesting to you today, is if big data were not a problem, if the volume, velocity, and variety, if you're a technology person, you know these things, but let's say just for a second, the management, the consumption, the analytics, the purposing of this data was not a problem whatsoever <coughs> anymore. What would you do with it? And on that day, when I was in DC, what I told everyone, I said, gather your leaders. And I said, by the way, this was new to me. I'm like, holy smokes. This you know how hard this was when I was doing projects out in Oklahoma or Washington, California? Oh my goodness, and I'm looking at meeting with all these people. In fact, we're doing it. We're going to Disney, all over the world. Continents, we're applying big data and we're solving problems. Walmart. I told them, gather your leaders and write down all the things you would have done over the last two or three years if the volume, variety, and velocity of this data wasn't a problem for you anymore. What if you could just analyze it, retrieve it, search it, act upon it, what would you do? And the amount of calls and activity that got out of that were amazing. In fact, we just went to one three-letter agency and said, look, you have so many of this season about me. This is just, here's all you can drink. Let's go do amazing things. And here at Google, that's the way Google thinks too. And what I'm proposing as we talk about innovation and leadership in this case, in this room, no matter how senior you are, no matter how long you've been around, no matter what department you are or what your age is, look at your problems through today's capabilities and elements. Look at your challenges through what exists today. How about if we use social media-like capabilities to organize around a veteran or a child or somebody in need of service? Look at, let's think for a second. I'll use one great example. I love this one. How about Uber? How about a re, re, how about re-looking at the way taxi cab and transportation is done? What if you could download, in fact you can, what if you can download an app onto your smartphone, push a button, and say, come get me? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? How about, you know what, I got, this is really cool, I got my mom to try a smartphone. I was trying so hard, I'm like, mom, I, work, I worked for, when I was at Microsoft, I mean, I, Google, I, I go, mom, you gotta look at this. 
And you know what ultimately flipped her? Was Max. I said, you're going to take my phone and no matter where you go, you're going to speak into it and you're going to tell it where you want to go and it's going to tell you how to get there turn by turn. Now she's a smartphone. She's on faith. She's, you know, she's texting. She texts me like crazy. Her and my daughter, I'm like, yeah, this is what's now. What if for, what if every veteran in the country, what if we had them download an app onto their smartphone? And that very same app and that very same look and feel they could have on their desktop or their tablet or their laptop. Any device, anywhere, anytime, they can come get their information. Be supported by the community that's there to support them. We can do that. In fact, we are doing that. Take any challenge you have. Take today's technologies and apply them at those challenges with all the proper due diligence. And look at those core elements is that I want to search and find information so that I could then, with my community of people who are supporting this individual, let's take a foster care child. How about a teacher? How about a caseworker? Court-appointed special advocate. How about a foster family? How about the previous foster family? How about the doctor? What if we had a wheel? And on that wheel are all the faces of these people, and in the middle is the child. And when a question comes out about how to best support that child, what if we click on that button and I can open a, a text or a video conference and communicate with that person and ask for information? What if every one of those individuals, who has a silo of data that's accessible to them? What if every one of them could go to a simple Google search box right then on that video conference or on that telephone <coughs> call and go to a search box and type information and go to their silos of data and bring that information out right now? What if we built it, because this is important in government, we can't afford no Tom Brokaw moments. I've seen these two implementing Cowans, lost a child. That is, you know what, when you set a bar and a standard so high to take care of kids and families, you need to step up and adhere to it. So I totally understand the importance of making sure that when that individual goes to a search box and types for the information, they're only allowed to retrieve the search results that they're allowed to see in their job role. We can do that. We're doing it. Let's rethink the way we innovate. And in my opinion, what that means is let's leverage what's already built. Do we need to, do we need to have a five-year plan to build stuff that at the end of that fifth year already is not compatible with what we started with? Do we, do we need to do that? I don't think we need to do that anymore. I really don't. It's just not necessary. The whole world is moving this way. There's many companies who say cloud will never happen. They're going. The reality is cloud has happened. And we're not blazing into this bold, risky future. In fact, we're catching up to a successful past at this point. It's time to do that. And so this is where, you know, I'll coin a phrase that my dad always told me when I'd say I was going to pull the weeds later or whatever when I was young. My dad went to the Naval Academy. He expected things out of me. He expected performance out of him. He expected many things, but one of the phrases that I use to this day, and I use it on my own kids, is don't talk, do. Don't talk about it, do it. If you set up on the path of actually doing this, the end result is not that far away. It's really not that far away. In fact, the risk of getting there now is not, is not what it used to be. So don't talk, do. Don't talk do will get you the innovative result, and it comes from leadership at all levels. And I, and I think, and I think this is the right thing, is to look at building human systems on technology that already exists. The computers and whatever, the amazing cloud and all the horsepower and everything else delivers amazing things, but the human brain's, brain's pretty powerful too. Let's take all the human brains in and around a child, a family, a veteran, pick one, and let's connect them and let's Give them the simple tools to get the job done. And let's find leaders all across the organization to build those, to participate in those human systems. That, I, I came up here expecting to do 15 slides in 15 minutes. I hit them. Uh, I hit all 15. We'll send it to you and you can see the pictures that go along with what I just said. Uh, but I will add, hey, we're doing it. We're doing this today. And it's not just Google. We, the state's doing it. My competitors are doing it. Everybody get on and let's lead and innovate. And that's it. All right? Thank you all.